video, we're going to look at those lovely dual concentric knobs and the buttons on the left hand side. I've assigned a sample to track A1 using the method shown in the previous video. Let's start with the dual concentric knobs. These are multi purpose and their function changes depending upon what fader mode you're in. A quick definition of fader mode these are the parameters that are being controlled by the faders and knobs. This is defined by the buttons on the left hand side, which we'll look at throughout this video. But if none of the buttons are selected, you are in mixer mode, in which case the concentric knobs control filter cutoff and resonance. They default to a low pass filter, but if you press shift and B whilst in mixer mode, you will be greeted with the filter settings menu. Here you can switch to band pass or high pass filtering. Moving on, if I select level, I can now set the maximum level of this track. If I deselect level and return to normal mixer mode, the fader still controls the volume of that track, but in relation to where I just set it in the level section. This is a great way to set up all the relative levels of your tracks so that you can just throw up the faders to max in mix mode while performing. A note about controlling faders. A large line will appear at the value that was last set with the fader for the function you were looking at. In this case, level. A smaller line will then show you the fader's real time position, which may be above or below the previously set value. To alter the value, move the fader, and once the small line passes through the long, the two will then become one. If this is not your preferred way of working, you can press shift and settings and open the global settings accordion. Scroll down to fader catch up and deselect it. To lock the faders for a fader mode, press shift and F8. To unlock, press shift and F8 again. To lock the faders in all modes, press shift and F9. And to unlock, press shift and F9 again. Holding shift whilst moving a fader gives you the opposite of the lock state. For example, if the faders are locked and I hold shift and move the fader, it will be temporarily unlocked until I release shift. Conversely, if the faders are not locked and I hold shift and move the fader, the fader position will be locked, but I can move the physical fader to a different position without affecting the value. Moving down, if I select pitch and move the fader, I can change the pitch of the sample. You can change the pitch resolution of the fader by pressing shift and the pad to bring up the track settings menu. Scroll down to pitch resolution and your options are classic 16, classic 32, semitones, diatonic, aeolian and fine. You can also transpose the bass pitch of the sample from within the track settings menu and this will match the selected resolution. As a couple of examples, here's pitch resolution set to classic 16. and now set to fine. If I navigate back to the track settings menu again and switch the audio engine to classic, the sample will now play back at 26 kilohertz and 12 bit, and you'll hear the crunchy aliasing effect when changing pitch. You can also manually adjust the bit depth right down to one bit to crunch up the sound even further. Next, let's move on to envelope. By default, there are two hi-fi envelopes per track, although there is an optional third classic envelope that we'll talk about in a moment. For now, we'll just stick with the hi-fi two. You can cycle between them using shift and the B button for the track you're on. The first envelope has a V above it to denote that it is responsible for volume contouring, although it can be used for pitch and filter modulation. The second envelope is labelled with two dots. For quick changes, you can use the stack knobs and the fader. The top knob alters attack time, the bottom knob alters sustain, and the fader alters release. But for more precise changes, press the B button to bring up the Hi-Fi Envelope Editor. We're now looking at the full settings for an attack, hold, decay, sustain, hold, release, envelope, or AHD SHR. Fader 1 controls attack, Fader 2 hold, Fader 3 decay, Fader 4 sustain, Fader 5 hold, and Fader 6 release. 
The faders are useful because you can make changes in percentages and decimals, but you can make fine adjustments of one cent at a time. To do this, to press the encoder or hit enter to tab to the setting in question, and then use the encoder or arrow keys to make adjustments. Now with an envelope on a traditional synthesizer that uses free running oscillators, the attack, decay and release stages all refer to time and the overall length of the envelope can be changed, which works because the oscillators continually output a sound. With a sampler like the S2400, the sound source is a sample that has a beginning and an end. So the envelope stages refer to a percentage of the total sample length, except for sustain, which refers to a level. The envelope can be shorter than the sample if desired. To alter this, navigate to the sigma symbol and lower the percentage. As well as volume, we can use Hi-Fi Envelope 1 to modulate pitch in either direction with Fader 7. And Filter Cutoff in either direction with Fader 8. A note, there is conveniently control of filter cutoff and resonance and pitch from within the Hi-Fi envelope editor, so you don't need to come out of it to adjust those settings. Knob 8 controls cutoff and resonance, and knob 7 controls pitch. To navigate to the full settings for Hi-Fi envelope 2, hit Shift and B. Because Hi-Fi envelope 1 is also assigned to volume contouring as mentioned, I'm going to use Hi-Fi envelope 2 for filter modulation, and a touch of pitch modulation. I've loaded in a single sawtooth sample from a TB303 as an example of this in action. Finally, let's look at the classic envelope. Whilst envelope is selected, press Shift and A on the track in question to bring up the envelope settings menu for that track. Select the volume envelope and change it to classic. Press back to return and you now have a two-stage volume envelope with sustain hold followed by release. The fader adjusts the envelope length, but the stack knobs are not active. With the classic volume envelope activated, you can now use Shift and the B button to cycle through the classic volume envelope labeled V, Hi-Fi envelope 1 labeled with a single dot, and Hi-Fi envelope 2 labeled with a double dot. You can still access the Hi-Fi envelope editor as before, but there is no separate editor for the classic envelope as it's only a two-stage affair and it only contours volume. Last but not least, let's look at Loop Slice. Select it and then press the B button for the track you're working with and you're greeted with the Waveform Editor. If you hit Help and scroll to the bottom, you'll see that it recommends setting up your faders thusly. Once done, press Help again to return. Now you'll see why we just set that up, because Fader 1 adjusts the sample start point by percentage, Fader 2 adjusts the sample start point in milliseconds, and Fader 3 in samples. Faders 4 and 5 edit the loop point in percentage and milliseconds, which we'll look at in a moment, and faders 6, 7 and 8 edit the end point in samples, milliseconds and percent respectively. For a closer look, you can zoom in using F3 and zoom back out using F1. Pressing and holding F3 will zoom all the way in, and pressing and holding F1 will zoom all the way out. F2 shows you the zoom extent, which is the range between your start and end points. Press and hold F2 to lock the zoom extent and press it again to unlock. F4 and F6 shift the slice point left and right. This will only work if the slice point is small enough to shift. F5 will snap the start or end point to a zero crossing. Use enter or the encoder to toggle between them when doing this. Or pressing and holding F5 will snap all points to a zero crossing at once. F7 reverses the slice pressing it again returns the sample to normal. F8 locks the faders to prevent the start and end points being accidentally changed, as mentioned earlier. To activate looping, press Shift and B. A note, looping is only possible for samples of less than two megabytes. As mentioned before, you can now use faders four and five to set the loop point and F5 to force it to a zero crossing. Next, toggle over to the times and clock symbols to set the loop repeats or loop time. 
You will notice that adjusting one alters the other. As an example, here's a loop I made earlier. A note, if your classic volume envelope is active, your loop settings will be slightly different. You will have time from zero to forever. To switch looping off, just press shift and B again. A couple more things to mention, you can press the level button for options to normalize your sample and the save button to access options to save your sample or sliced sample. This can either be a new file saved in a project or folder of your choosing, or it can overwrite the original. In memory, normalization is non-destructive and can be changed multiple times without modifying the sample data, but when the sample or slice is saved, the normalization level is permanently applied to the save file. If in doubt, use save to project or save to folder. You can save multiple slices from the same sample using this method, but it's more effectively done using multi-mode, which we'll look at in the next video. Oh,